staying fast in the off season, staying fast when you're gaining mass. Welcome back to Seeker Strength. Welcome back to Seekistan. Today we're talking about how not to lose your speed in the off season when coaches told you you're too small and skinny and you need to be bigger, stronger, sexier, and all run more muscular. Now, one of the first places you want to start when we're looking to not lose our speed in the off season, when we're gaining mass or when we're gaining strength and hypertrophy, is to gain good quality body weight. And we can get away from this aspect. This is one of the most important places we need to start when we're planning this off season and what we need to monitor as the off season progresses. The most important thing you need to do is not gain too much fat mass. Now, realistically, unless you're Barry Bonds in the off season, you're probably going to gain a bit of fat mass when you're gaining weight in that off season, and that's no problem. Let's say you're a, a rugby player during the summer, you're putting on a bit of weight, and you're kind of embarrassed to wear your budgie smugglers at the beach now because you've a little bit of water weight. You know, you've got it. You're taking 10 grams of creatine, and you're just a little bit fatter. Don't be too concerned. But what's really important here is that when you're gaining mass, you need to assess. May it be from calipers, maybe you can afford a DEXA scan or something similar like that, or someone reliable to assess your fat mass or the body fat percentage as the off season goes on. So you can assess how it's going. And then you need to make some reasonable expectations of what is appropriate for you. For example, if you're 80 kilos or you're 100 kilos, you're probably going to have a little bit of a different expectations of fat mass. If you're 80 kilos now, you're a good player in the off season. Your body fat percentage is probably pretty low right now. You know, you could be somewhere in the region of 10, 12, maybe 13% body fat. And it's it's reasonable to expect for you to gain maybe 3, 4%, depending on how your body comp is. However, if you're 120 kilos and you're 20% body fat, and that might be appropriate for your position, it might not be appropriate for you to gain that 3, 4 extra percent. So you might need to be a little bit harsher on yourself. The reason we want to do this is because all body mass inhibits a couple of different aspects or rather impacts a couple of different aspects of our aerobic and our speed capacities. So any increase, any kilo of body mass we gain is going to negatively affect our VO2 max, even if that's pure muscle mass. Then in terms of speed, we're going to be to a certain extent, again, depending on where you're starting on, your speed is going to be affected by how much mass you carry. It's kind of like a payload carrying idea or analogy, the more mass you gain, even though you might be able to produce more power or extra force from that muscle mass, you still have to carry that and account for that when you gain that weight. If you're a rugby player, you can lose 0.5% off your top end velocity at the, uh, the benefit of gaining extra weight. Whereas if you're a sprinter, it's going to be a little different. You want to essentially lose none of that when it comes to actual being in season. But the overriding factor here is gain muscle mass, gain as much weight as appropriate and no more, and try and minimize and assess the body fat percentage you're gaining during that off season and make a call if you're getting sloppy. Don't get sloppy. Speaking of getting sloppy, on to the next point. The next thing you have to remember is that for your entire in-season, so for certain sports, this might be three quarters of the year, it might be two thirds of the year. Um, definitely some of the field sports were really getting up there in terms of months spent in season. The big issue is you're doing a massive amount of sports specific work. And depending whether it's rugby, soccer, football, whatever it is, when you're in season, that sports specific work takes care of a lot of our speed work. So you might start playing games in September if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. You'll actually find yourself getting a small bit faster and faster for a number of months as you become more specifically fit in that particular domain. So maybe you're a winger, you're playing a lot of games, doing a lot of training sessions. You might be doing very little specific speed work, but the soccer or the rugby or the football itself is actually providing that stimulus for you to have increases in speed or at the very least maintenance and speed. Now, when we come into our off-season, we're kind of hit with a bit of a dilemma. So my main goal in the off-season might be to gain size, gain strength, gain some power, but I'd rarely think about gaining my aerobic capacity or gaining my speed capacity. If we look at speed first, it is the first thing that's going to peter out or the first thing that will really, really have a noticed uh, degradation when we stop doing it. So I stop playing games. I stop training, maybe I stop playing a little bit of tag rugby in our warm-up, and now suddenly I have zero speed work at all. And it's not a massive step for people to forget that they're doing no speed work. Obviously, the main priorities are gaining mass, gaining size, but you'll actually have to do some specific speed work sessions in that off-season period. Now, what will these sessions look like? 
they won't be massive in terms of volume. They won't be massive in terms of any sports specific work. So it's not like I'm doing speed drills where I'm doing offense and defense or I'm not doing tackle evasion work or I'm certainly not working with a ball. These speed sessions are literally just that. I'm going maybe to a track, maybe to a field, maybe to a section of flat road. I am going to pick the amount of runs I'll do. Maybe it's 10 by 50 meters. Maybe it's 20 by 20 meters. Something along those lines. Quite reasonable work to rest period. So obviously during this period, I'm not working a lot on that high intensity interval model. What I'm really looking at here is moving myself quickly a number of times and that basically being enough stimulus for my body to say, okay, we're not going to do all that fiber type shifting that everyone's worried about. I'm not going to lose all of that neuromuscular uh, connection. I'm not going to lose all of that neuromuscular preparation that's so, so important. So that's our speed work. We probably have to do speed work at least once a week during the off season to make sure we don't have that massive drop off. Now, going hand in hand with our speed work, obviously, is aerobic work. And everybody is afraid of losing their gains due to too much aerobic work. We see it with weightlifters, powerlifters. We see it with field sports athletes, track and field athletes. They say they work so incredibly hard to gain a kilo of mass, two kilos of mass, three kilos of mass in the off season. Why would I possibly be doing aerobic work? And what we have here is we have a kind of twofold thing. So the first thing and the most important thing is that when we get back in season or when we start doing sports specific work, you're going to have to get back on top of that aerobic hill. That aerobic horse will have to be ridden once more. And so if I go into my pre-season period or my in-season period with zero aerobic capacity, I'm going to have quite a steep hill to climb up. Now, that's a big issue if we've gotten a bit cheeked out and a bit chunky during the off season. We've done all that great work. But now the month of August for me is going to be running four times a week and it's going to be very difficult to maintain that size, very difficult to hold on to those extra few hundred grams of muscle we've gained. So in the case of a field sports athlete, just two times per week doing a small bit of long, slow distance work, just getting some sort of zone two or maybe even zone three cardio work done is going to be so, so important. For the first reason is when I go back in season, I don't have this massive hill to climb. The second real big advantage of doing aerobic work during the off season or a small amount of it anyway, is that I'm going to have such a better quality of training when I'm doing my weight training sessions. So whether you're really pushing your strength hard and it's big heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, heavy power cleans and bench press, if it's that, it means my intra-set recovery is going to be a hell of a lot better. I'm going to be able to get better quality reps done, better quality strength movements done. But even if it's just pure hypertrophy work, if I'm more aerobically fit, all of those waste products are going to be shuttled out of our cells a hell of a lot better. If I'm more cardiovascularly fit, I'll get better quality sleep. I'll also be able to recover in between the workouts far, far better. So there are multiple reasons you should be doing both speed work and aerobic work in the right amount in the off season. Now, it's also okay to understand that you're going to lose some top end speed in your max capacity. So if you compare yourself to your peak shape, maybe halfway through the season, if you're a rugby player or a track athlete, you realistically don't need to and shouldn't have to keep that top end capacity once you get into the, the off season when you're gaining that strength and hypertrophy phase. So when you're in that phase, it's okay. There's no problem. You've only so many resources to allocate to different attributes. You've only so many resources to allocate to different styles of training and different aspects to focus on. And by and large, speed for a lot of people, unless you've a lab, you know, catastrophic injury, is pretty elastic and remains quite well within the realms of your capacities once you get back into shape, assuming your body weight isn't drastically altered. So, you know, if you finish an off-season and you're 10 kilos heavier than you are before, even though you get back into shape, you might not necessarily be as fast as you were before, and that might be okay in your particular case. Or if you've gained maybe 500 extra grams of muscle mass or, you know, in a crazy scenario, maybe you've gained a kilo of lean mass in the off season, there's a possibility you could be faster. So during that off season phase, it's totally okay to lose a little bit of speed. Now, you do again want to be cautious of what's going on. You know, if you're 
in the realms of 15% or more of your top end speed if you are constantly monitoring and taking note of where that is from your kind of moderate amount of speed work that you might be doing based on Dara's recommendations. If you're still within a, a pretty normal level of performance, you know, if you're in 85, 90% of your max capacity, maybe you're testing your 40 yard dash, your 60 meter sprints, or you're doing a Bronco test or something like that, that you have a fairly good idea and a fairly good handle of how you're going. Now, you obviously have to make those caveats because it's probably more useful for you if you've gotten the agenda, you've gotten the prerogative from maybe your coach or your advisor, you've made this decision yourself that you need more muscle mass for your sport. And even in the case where that muscle mass slightly negatively affects your top end speed in the in season, it's still probably worth it for your sport. So in this case, it's more important to you to focus on these current goals, those strength training, that muscle mass or whatever it might be, your particular skill development, it is okay to lose touch with that top end speed for a short period of time, for that off season, maybe the two, three or four months, however long it lasts, because you know it's gonna come back in the end once you start training, or even if it doesn't come back to that 100% capacity, you know that it's still better for your actual sport specific activity, whatever your sport is, and it was worth that payoff. But it's important to not try and stay in touch with that top end speed. We see this across a lot of different sports, all the way from strength sports to crossfitters to in season athletes and or off season athletes playing rugby, for example, or track and field athletes are very notorious for this, or where they, they want to stay in. in track shape all year round in the off season they've got a chance to recover build some muscle mass give their joints a rest in a different form of training and they want to stay in that shape they want to stay kind of in their 800 meter shape or they want to stay in their hurdling shape or whatever it is when they would be much better served by focusing on different areas of their training so they can come back better and more of a quality athlete in the in season the following one but what ends up happening is because they don't give most of their uh, resources to improving and having a great off season, they end up never really improving. They end up never really recovering from the previous season. And then year on year, we end up then with more injuries, no improvement in performance. And most likely in those cases, where those athletes want to stay in shape all year round, you get this slow degradation of top end performance over the course of seasons because they never really allocated proper resources to the things they should have been doing in the off season. So with everything we're saying here, the big thing you have to kind of get around is the general planning. So having some sort of structure, having some sort of layout there. A program such as ours, the off-season strength and hypertrophy program, is perfect for 99.9% .9 of the athletes who are going into an off-season period now. It's going to give you four days a week of sessions. The sessions are around an hour to an hour and a half in length, so they tend to be quite concise. You get a lot of work done there. Then adding in just a small amount of speed work and some amount of aerobic work, you can have a very, very well structured off season and get a lot of it, a lot more out of it than you would have in previous off seasons. The best way we recommend running it is through the Seeker Strength app. As you go through the off season, maybe you have a lift that your 1RM isn't quite correct. And as you go through and as you enter in your values for each of the sessions, the program is going to alter itself for the following weeks and you will be at the very kind of cutting edge of how effective your sessions are going to be. This is me cutting the edge. Chop.